Hey, you're listening to Coffee Talk with Liquid Shana 1973. Here's your host, Shane Lakita. Good morning to all of you hardworking, goal-striving, effective, focused individuals out there in this podcast land that you're listening right now to my podcast. (laughs) And uh, I just wanted to say hello and check in with everybody. I'm just fresh off of my trip down to Virginia Beach, Virginia to visit family, to get some good soul food going and connect with people that I haven't connected with in a while. And it was really nice to just get out there and relax and also just engage and have a really good time with uh, those that I love and I care about. So the last podcast that I had was right before I took off to go down there and I was telling you my objective to go down there and what I was going to be doing when while I was there and everything was great and everything came out perfect. So this morning I have my coffee in hand. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for listening to Coffee Talk with Liquid Shano 1973. I am your host Shane Lakita as my wonderful intro guy in the beginning said, who's my son, 13 years old. I know I've said it before, but uh, he sounds even better than I do on the microphone. So he did the intro for me to be able to kick off this day with you. And speaking of him, he's what my what my podcast is about today. And I want to check in with you guys because, you know, I got back from this little vacation time period and And, uh, you know, I I was pretty mindful the whole entire time that I was there. You know, it's pretty stressful. I got a a father with Alzheimer's and some other stuff going on and, you know, financial stuff and all kinds of just worries and all that stuff that we have that normally happens in life when when we're just going through life, right? And for me, it was difficult to make sure that I stayed mindful and made sure that I stayed on pace of where I needed to be when it came to eating and it came to making sure that I was tracking some meals, I was making sure that I was eating right, eating healthier, not going up for seconds and thirds and those kind of things. So I made some pretty mindful decisions and I stayed pretty much even with my weight across the board, but I still wasn't feeling all that great about it because for the whole week before that, I had been hitting the gym and really been working out and, and doing a lot of the really great things while I really didn't get much of any kind of exercise while I was down there. It was more of just helping out and maintaining. So I got back and I was in a good mood and I was, I was I was feeling it. I was ready to get back in the swing of things. But I then noticed that I was starting to doubt myself and I was starting to look in the mirror and say to myself, well, you know, you're still heavier than what you were before and you aren't doing all that well. So I, I give you that scenario because I wanted you to tell, I wanted to let you know what my mindset was before I was going to have this conversation with my son. So here's how the conversation with my son went. My son was downstairs and he was about to take off to go to school and I was getting up in the morning. It was early. We both were up. We all just kind of buzzing around, getting ready to go to work and school and do all of our normal family duties. And my son looks at me and he says something to the effect of, you know, I'm I'm never going to be good enough to really make the high school football team. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not the most, you know, good looking kid in the whole entire school or anything like that. So girls aren't really all that attracted to me. You know, they, they like my personality. They like the fact that I'm funny and I'm this, that, and the other, but they're just not. And so he went through this list of about three or four different things. And he was kind of mumbling some under his breath and some of it he was telling directly to me. And so I had this conversation when I sat him down and I said, listen, you know, you got a few minutes to go to school. Let's converse and let's talk about what those conversations look like. And I discussed with him a little bit about the concept of self-love, right? Making sure that no matter where you're at, no matter what space that you're living in at that moment in time, to make sure you step back and look at yourself and say, I'm really proud of a lot of the things that I'm doing and I've done. And making sure that you're not just belittling yourself or looking at yourself and saying, hey, you know what, this really sucks or I'm, I'm not worth it or I can't do things or those things. As many times we've talked on this podcast, correct? We've talked a lot about making sure that one quick shift of a mindset can really make a big difference in your life or your your day or your hour, right? Even if we go minute by minute sometimes. So, you know, we're having this conversation and I said to him, I said, you know, listen, you, you need to think about the way that you think about yourself, okay? You need to sit back and say to yourself, okay, what am I proud of? 
And so we took inventory, just like I do on my my own journey and where I'm at with everything. And we sat down and took inventory. And I said, you know, let's talk about the things you're really proud of this year. And what are the things? And one of the big things he said was my grades. Last year, I struggled with my grades. And this year, I'm doing really well. And I've got all 90s and above in my grades. And I, I feel really good about that. I said, okay, what else? And he said, well, you know, I worked my way up on my football team to be able to go from not really playing all that much to be in a starting inside linebacker and safety on the team. And, and I, I got the game ball a couple games in a row because I got sacks or fumbles. And he's saying this, I was really proud of that. I said, okay, what else? He said, you know, I'm really proud of the fact that, you know, I, I at home here, we got we built our little man cave. We have this little room that's on the side cove of his bedroom, which is a nice little man cave. And we just rebuilt it and put up some drywall and some other stuff. So he said, I'm really proud of that because, you know, it gives me some place, a place to go to that I can just kind of relax a little bit and just get away. But it's really nice and it's painted well and it looks nice and it's got the Notre Dame colors and all kinds of stuff that I'm really proud of. I said, OK, great. And so we kept going. And he listed about four or five different things. And then we sat down and I said, okay, so you just listed off all these things that you're proud of. And then you went through this whole laundry list of things that you're that you're upset about yourself, right? You're going through those normal teenage angst. I'm not good enough. I'm upset about certain things. I'm getting bullied. I got this going on or whatever. And we had this long conversation around weighing out the goods over the bads and taking a look at some of those goods, such as doing good in school and being really proud of the fact that all the teachers like him and all the teachers are engaged with him and he's doing well and he's, you know, in any of the courses that he's not doing as good as what he wants, he's really working on and he's proud of it and all those good things. And I said to him, I said, let's park there for just one second. Let's park in that space of schoolwork. And so we talked about it. We talked about what he's most proud about the schoolwork. Is it the fact that he didn't really want to do it last year, but this year he has this drive to be able to go ahead and do good in school? And we, we discussed the reasons why. Is it because he wants to go to college? Is it because he just wants that uh, accolade of going, I've done really well? Is he? Is it the fact that he wants to make his parents proud? Whatever it is. And we went through this laundry list of, of, of the reasons why that made him proud. Now we're getting deep here, right? So we're going to a surface level piece of, I'm looking at myself in the mirror, I'm not feeling good about what's going on, but now I look at the things that are going positive and the things that I'm doing really well, and how do I accentuate those things that are going well, and how do I treat those things as a accelerator or an accelerant for me to be able to be successful moving forward. And so we talked about making sure that he lives in that space more often. And it's hard to do. And I explained to him, I said, it's, it, human nature is we immediately go towards the negative side of things. And we go towards the things that we, you know, need to work on or need to be able to just get in front of or, or, or the things that we do wrong. We're always looking at those types of things in our journey, whether it's health related, whether it's family related, whether it's uh, our jobs, whatever it is, we're always doing that. We're always beating ourselves up and saying to ourselves, okay. So this is what I did wrong. I'll tell you about an exercise, and I shared this a long time ago, probably on another podcast early in the days, but when I'm, when I'm in a leadership position, I'll sit down with somebody and I'll have this conversation, and we'll go through an interaction with a customer, for instance, okay? And they're sitting there and they're saying to themselves, I'm going to uh, you know, uh, go through this interaction, I'm going to help a, uh, a customer, I'm going to be able to deliver a great experience, I'm going to, be able to do everything we need to do, all that good stuff. And so they're going through the, the interaction, they're talking to the customer, and I'm observing, right? And I'm sitting there listening, and then what we'll do is we'll catch up afterwards. And I'll say to them, I'll say, okay, so tell me, what went well in that interaction with that customer? What did you do well in that interaction? And it, what's interesting is nine times out of ten, they don't, they, they don't want to list what they did well. They don't want to talk about the fact that they delivered a great experience or made the customer smile or uh, delivered exactly what the customer was looking for or set follow-ups or did great things with the customer. Nope. They don't want to talk about any of that. What they want to talk about is what they did wrong. And I'll say I, I, nine times out of 10, this is no lie. I have to stop them in their tracks and go, wait, I'm not talking about things to get better at or areas of opportunity or anything like that right now. What I'm talking about is ways or, or what you did well. Okay, so let's park right there. And human nature is we don't talk about what we do well because one, we might think we're egotistical. Two, we might think that, you know, why our head's not going to get too big or I'm going to get too overconfident with the things that I'm doing or whatever it is. And human nature steps in and it starts to creep into our brains and we start to then belittle the things that we're doing to be able to 
I don't know if it's to bring ourselves down to a level that if we do any better, we'll feel good about ourselves or whatever. I, I can't even tell you. I, I mean, seriously, I'm not a doctor, but I got to tell you, anybody that is a doctor that deals with brains, I give them all kudos to the world because they literally have to dig inside this, this crazy labyrinth that's up in my cranium up here. And you have to dig through and sift through a lot of really bad baggage that we have going on. You know, and it's interesting because we we try to battle through that. We try to set ourselves up for success. We give ourselves tools how to be successful. We talk about it all the time, but it's so hard to do it. And so that's the conversation I was having with my son. I said to him, okay, so here are the things that you don't think you did well. Great, awesome, cool. Let's go ahead and make that laundry list and put that off to the side if you want to, if that's going to make you feel better at this moment in time. But now that, we're, now that we made the list of positives and the things that you do really well and the things that you're most proud of, why can't we live in that space just for once? Why can't you turn the page of being the negative Nancy that you're being right now and the person that you're just diving into the negative situation or what you're doing wrong or how you're feeling down in the dumps or any of those things? Why can't you live in the space of, you know, I'm damn proud of the fact that I got good grades or I'm damn proud of the fact that I put work into something and I got return on it and I'm feeling good about it and the teachers are feeling good about it. My parents are feeling good about it. All those things. Why can't we live there? Why can't you park there just a little bit more? Put your little parking space in, park in that space, and think to yourself, okay, instead of being so negative, I need to turn the negative around to a positive. And it takes work. It's not easy. I told them. I said, it takes, it takes, you, it takes time for you to dig in and think to yourself, I've got I've to change things around here. My momentum is going down a negative spiral, and I'm going down a negative place. Just like for you and I or anybody else that's having food issues or doesn't want to work out, what happens? We get in the space of we go down the road of a negative trend or trajectory, right? We're going a certain direction of a negative place, and it's really hard to turn that around and change the path of that, of where we're going. It's one of the most difficult things to do because you know inertia and kinetic energy and all that scientific mumbo jumbo stuff means once something gets moved in a certain direction it's pretty tough to move it right J just like if you're moving i don't know a space shuttle or whatever and you've got it moving in a certain direction it takes an act of congress to be able to stand in front of that to be able to stop that thing from moving the direction it is just like our brains because we immediately want to go down the road of negativity we immediately want to go down the road of carrying the momentum exactly the direction that our brain wants to take us and it takes work it takes weight it takes all kinds of energy for you to turn it around and to turn a frown upside down or turn a negative to a positive or whatever your your analogy might be with that kind of situation so the advice that I was given was when you get in the space of that negativity and you get in that those self-doubt thoughts and those moments of, you know, I'm not good, I, I, I'm, I'm not good enough, I don't look great or whatever. Of course, I did my due diligence of being a good dad and I sat down with them and I said, listen, you know what, you're a great looking kid, you got a great personality, you're awesome, you, got, you just stick to who you are, you got a big heart, you volunteer all the time with me, you come out with us, you spend time with your family, you're engaging, you're nice, you're compassionate, all those things, right? Of course, I laid it to those. And I made my own list of the things that he does really well to be able to enhance the list that he had, that he had made of some of the positives. So now we've got this list of all of these positive things that far outweigh any of the negatives, but the negatives feel like they're the end of the world when you think about them, right? I mean, think about it. We have all kinds of things. If we really do dig in and we think about the positives and we overcome that negative thought, there's so many things that we could be positive about ourselves. But we don't. we don't. We don't take the time to do that more often than not because it's easier to live in the space of negativity. How many times have you sat down with a friend, a family member, whoever else, and you might be at dinner and you're sitting there having a conversation and somebody's just really in the muck, right? They're in the, they're in the doldrums and they're talking about the, the, how they're financially uh, unstable and they're not making any money and their job sucks and their relationship's not that great and they got whatever else that's going on. They got all these laundry lists of things that are coming around. And you have a positive person that's at the table that might look at them and say, hey, you know what, though? Listen, you're living and you're breathing, right? Isn't that a good thing? I mean, really? And then what happens to the negative person that's already in that space? They, one, will look at that positive person and say, listen, okay, Mr. Kumbaya, rainbows and unicorns, I get it, blah, 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 but this is my life or whatever else. 
or you'll get the person that'll say, yeah, but I'd rather not be, a, a, you know, living and breathing right now because of the situation I'm in. And they try to bring you back down to the muck or the mire that they're living in. Now, that takes work. Think about it. Now, how much work did it take you to be able to go against the status quo where everybody could live in that space of that negativity for you to bring a positive influence to try to change the trajectory of what their momentum is and for you to be able to put a stopper on it and put try to put whatever you can to be able to say, hold on, don't live there. What are you doing? I mean, why, why, why live in that negative space when you can live in a positive place when you can achieve things and you will get things done and you will be successful at everything you're trying to do? All of those different situations that arise all those things that come up, they're really important to really take a look at. So when you think about it, it takes work for you to get there, for you to be effective enough to be able to move something from negative to positive. It takes work, effort, time, energy, and everything. But it's so worth the investment. It's completely worth the time and effort that you're going to put in place for you to sit back and say, okay, how can I change this vision or the view or anything like that. Is it worth it for me to do so? It completely is worth it. It's completely worth it for you to be that positive influence, not only for your journey, but for anybody around you because being a positive influence in the world is completely something that we all should be striving for and trying to achieve, right? So take the conversation that I have with my kid and we're having this conversation around turning the situation around, becoming more of a positive influence Relate that to your journey of whatever you're trying to accomplish. If you're having a bad day and you can't get your runs in or you're or you're not running at the pace you want to, or you're having a bad day and you want to go to the gym but you just don't want to go and you're laying on the couch and you're like, screw that, I don't want to go to the gym, whatever it is that's that, that, that's holding you back from doing the things that you want to do or the whatever the negative thoughts that you're having that's telling you that you can't do it, you got to lean in on that moment. In that moment, right then and there, when you get those lazy thoughts or those negative thoughts and those kind of things are the times that are most important for you to focus on what you can do and the positive things that you do. So ask yourself that question, just like I do when I'm at work. And I look at somebody and I say, what went well with that interaction? And they can't answer because they're talking about the negatives. Stop right there. And say, nope, I didn't ask that. I asked you what went well, not what you need to fix. What went well, right? Same thing with your journey. What's going well today? Not all the things that are going wrong. Not all the things that you might have got yelled at at work or you might have had a fight with your spouse in in the morning or you couldn't get the kid off the school or whatever else. All the laundry list of the things that are happening in a normal day in the life of, right? But what went well today and how can you use that to be a positive influence on the rest of your day and the rest of your week? Just think about that just for a second, right? It's hard to do that. It's hard to think about that when you're in the negative space. So try your best to be able to focus on that. If you could put a plan in place that every time that you have a negative, lazy, or whatever kind of thought, that you can then turn it around with just a certain positive. And here's a great tip for you, right? Something that works for me is if you have four or five positive things that have gone on in the last couple days written on a piece of paper, again, on paper on purpose, then when something does get negative and you've got to change that thought around, how easy is it and how nice is it for you to be able to look right at that piece of paper and say, oh, wait a minute, hold on. You know, I'm sitting there in this negative space And I'm looking at this list here saying that I volunteered this morning and I should be proud of the fact that I volunteered. I am proud of that because I layered it in my busy day already and I went and volunteered and made an impact on someone's life. Think about that, right? Write it down and use those thoughts as you're moving forward. Once you go down that negative road, try your best to turn it around. Now, at the end of the day, there are going to be some days that you just need to live in the negative space. I get it. I totally get it. Life is difficult. It's hard. It really is something that we have to overcome a lot of times. And it throws us curveballs. It throws us all kinds of noise and nastiness and all that stuff. And I get it. And there are going to be some days that I just want to sit on the couch, curl up with a blanket and a cup of coffee and do nothing. Right? Or it's going to be some weekends that I just want to go out and I want to have some drinks with my friends, get loose or whatever, and just forget about all of my worries because that's just what needs to happen at that moment in time. It doesn't make you imperfect. It doesn't make you less of a, a, a great person or, or champion or anything like that. What it does is it means you're human and you got to work through those things and you got to think to yourself, okay, today's not my day. So tomorrow can be my day, but today's just not my day and I'm not feeling it. And that's okay. 
Don't beat yourself up because you might live in that space at that moment in time. But just know that if you're writing these thoughts down and you're taking note of the mental place that you're sitting in right now, and if you are having a bad day and you can't shake out of the funk, that's okay. So tomorrow, when you're having a better day, take note of how it felt yesterday and what you did to try to overcome it and maybe give yourself a couple little tools, a little tweaks here and there of what you're going to do moving forward on those days when they come. Because again, those days are going to come. They are. You're going to have negative days. My son's going to have negative days again. And we're going to have these conversations over again. And we're going to sit sit there and continue to try to give ourselves tools and arm ourselves with little bits and things that we can do moving forward that are going to help us to be successful with whatever we're trying to do. Okay? So try that today. Any moment that you're getting lazy, any moment that you're getting negative, any moment that you're just not feeling it, you're feeling kind of gross, and stand up and think to yourself, what have I done today that I'm actually proud of? Have I accomplished anything? Great. Let me think about that just for a second and be proud of that and put a little, you know, shine or coat of armor or a, a Superman symbol on my chest to be able to say, I did that. And this is something that I accomplished on a day where I'm having a bad day anyway. So these are the things that I know that I can do even on bad days. Have a great day, everybody. It's good to be back and we'll talk soon. Thanks for listening to the Coffee Talk with Luca Chano 1973 podcast. You can also follow him on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at LiquidChano1973. Also, if you get a chance, leave some love on iTunes. Have a great day.